Hello everyone, and welcome to our presentation on the use of modeling and simulations to support drug development programs in pediatric populations. My name is J.F. Mari, and I'm VP and Lead Scientist at Farsight Consulting Services. My main areas of interest include modeling and simulations to optimize study design in pediatric populations as well as patients with rare diseases. One of the most important challenges in pediatric drug development is to determine an optimal dose that will optimize the efficacy and safety profile of a particular drug. From that standpoint, quantitative pharmacology offers tremendous opportunities by supporting these decisions. The first step typically involves the construction of a population PKPD model in adults by linking concentration and response. We will be referring this as the drug model. The second step in includes the customization of this model by integrating a nanometric function accounting for differences in body weight between adult and pediatrics, and also by integrating a maturation function that basically takes into account the maturation of organs in some of the younger population uh, of pediatric patients. We will be referring this as the patient model. The combination of the drug and the patient model will allow us to make predictions and increase our level of confidence in predictions made in pediatric patients. The second type of challenge involved, this, uh, involved the, the, the nature of the study that will be performed in pediatric patients. In terms of the number of patients, the number of blood draws, uh, some operational aspects that are typically involved in pediatric studies. Again, here the combination of the drug and the patient model will be used to run a trial simulation scenario and test what-if scenarios. We will be referring this as the trial model, whereby multiple um, characteristics of a specific study design may be, uh, may be tested, and based on these outcomes, important decisions can be uh, taken to uh, optimize the drug development program. So the expected benefits here of trial simulations is, that, first of all, an increased likelihood of success by finding an optimal dose that would improve the efficacy safety profile of the drug. Secondly, we hope that these trial simulations which will shed light on potential reduction in trial duration in terms of reducing the number of subjects and so forth. And finally, the, the proposed study design may, be, may allow us to accelerate the enrollment of subjects by minimizing the number of blood to be sampled in pediatric populations. I will basically spend the next several slides discussing in greater details the, how a drug model, a patient model, and a trial model can be constructed, and I will finally wrap up with a case study. As I, as I was just mentioning, uh, a, a PKPD model can be constructed based on an adult data set. Typically, that involves clinical studies um, uh, in phase one, two, and three. So we're proposing here to merge all PK and PD data collected in adults and construct this drug model linking concentrations and efficacy. The next step will be to incorporate a mathematical function describing patient maturation. These uh, these uh, maturation functions are typically available from the public space. As uh, presented here on the slide, on the left uh, panel, we see that the liver maturation function has been characterized in the public space, and also there's an underlying mathematical function that describes this relationship. So we can clearly see that by adulthood, um, uh, basically, uh, pediatric patients have reached this adulthood level by about two years of age. On the right side of the panel here, we are basically presenting the renal maturation function, which typically describe how EGFR matures as a function of age. We can clearly see by one, uh, by one year of age, uh, patients have reached about 90% of the adult value, and by about two years of age, pediatric patients would have reached the full uh, adult equivalent uh, renal EGFR uh, component. A second type of model is being referred as physiologically based a PK model, whereby a drug and a patient model can be constructed as part of a semi-mechanistic framework. These types of framework include all major organs, which are basically described by one or more tissues, as presented here in the figure. And these models are really driven by the physical chemical properties of drugs and the physiological parameter describing the flows across various organs. These types of models require development of um, development and validation prior to making predictions in pediatric patients. Once we have a drug model and a, and a patient model, we can apply this model and use it basically to perform simulations and test what-if scenarios. These types of simulations are quite helpful to assess 
optimal starting dose, for example, and maintenance dose that will maximize the probability of obtaining the required exposure in order to optimize, again, the efficacy and safety of the, of the product. Here on the slide, we're basically presenting uh, four panels representing different types of dose level that were selected as a function of different body weight cohorts. So we can clearly see here that the proposed dosing scenarios are basically resulting in concentrations within the therapeutic window of the product. At the same time, we have minimized the risk of overdosing patients by here minimizing the number of concentrations above the window. And at the same time, at the other, at the other end of the spectrum, we're basically minimizing the risk of having um, sub-therapeutic exposure of the drug, which would be associated here to a lack of efficacy of the drug. So at the end of the day here, when we make simulations, we are basically supporting our dosing rationale and we are fully uh, cognizant of uh, the, pot the potential success of obtaining the required exposure in the targeted pediatric populations. In terms of study design improvement, again, here the model can be used to optimize the study design. So this is an example whereby, for example, 24 subjects with three blood draws would be associated to 80% power of success. If we believe that 24 subjects is too much, or even three samples is, um, is it, or, or if, for example, we believe that the number of PK samples can be increased, we could still consider reducing the number of patients, for example, to 12, but increase the number of PK samples to five, and we would still be able to obtain the 80% required power. So all in all here, these simulation scenarios are basically quite helpful to trade off uh, the number of patients versus the number of PK samples per patient. And this has tremendous opportunities in, in terms of executing the trial, in, in terms of being fully um, you know, aware of the risks of going forward with too many blood draws or uh, too many sample or too many uh, patients to be enrolled because we all know that pediatric patients are difficult to enroll and this may result into uh, significant delays in uh, study completion. I will uh, wrap up this presentation with a case study on the use of intravenous acetaminophen in pediatrics for the management of mild to moderate pain. So the challenge here was to determine a dosing rationale that would optimize the risk-benefit ratio. The second challenge was to develop an optimal study design in terms of number of patients and samples, and ultimately uh, some very important uh, questions from a regulatory body um, were being uh, requested in answering uh, the question as to uh, how would the intravenous dose um, perform relate, related uh, versus the, the intrarectal suppository uh, formulation. So the opportunity here is to apply modeling and simulations to guide dosing and ultimately perform simulations and avoid doing uh, a trial um, uh, comparing the intravenous versus the intrarectal administration and really answer the question by running simulations and try to convince regulatory bodies that uh, such a study would not be necessary to be uh, performed. So here, what the population PKPD model um, has uh, provided here is that neonates are, are expected to have a slower clearance basically due to the immature metabolism in this uh, very young patient population. And what this uh, basically uh, provided here is that um, a dose reduction should be uh, performed in the, in the younger pediatrics group to avoid overdosing the patients. So we have reduced the dosing, and by doing so, we were able to maintain drug exposure uh, similar to those observed in adults, which are presented here on the unity uh, number here. The second type of trial simulation here that was performed was to uh, waive uh, what we believe was an unnecessary study. So we have developed the PKPD model and we basically simulated the expected response, which is a pain reduction from baseline following intravenous and per rectal administration. So we can clearly see here that the, the gray line uh, is, is resulting in, in, an, in, in an insufficient pain reduction uh, and also significant dropout after per rectal dosing. What the simulations are also telling us is that the intravenous dosing would result in an optimal pain reduction and there would be an accumulation of effect following uh, multiple doses. 
So all in all, the lesson learned here from this uh, case study is that quantitative pharmacology offers tremendous opportunities to optimize and speed up drug development programs in pediatric patients. So the model here was used to support an optimal dosing strategy by reducing the dose in the younger group. We also used the model to minimize the number of subjects, and we ultimately did some strategic positioning according to various routes of administration. The net benefit here are obvious in the sense that the modeling was used to support dosing, and we were basically able to uh, execute the trial in a very efficient manner, and that resulted also to uh, answering some very important questions from a regulatory body, and we did not have to do um, um, uh, another trial. So the simulations method here basically avoided running an, a head-to-head -head trial uh, testing uh, multiple routes of administration of, uh, of acetaminophen. I have presented here some references and suggested reading based on the case study that I just presented, some key regulatory guidance pertaining to pediatric drug developments, as well as some very important maturation functions uh, that have been made uh, available in the public space, which can also be uh, leveraged and included as part of this pediatrics uh, drug development framework. Thank you.